Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah So inshallah today we continue uh, with some reflections from some ayat that were recited uh, in the second raka'ah of Isha today uh, Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar he recited the eighth verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bil qist In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he commands us um, with justice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries the verse on and he says وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِنُوا اِعْدِنُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is touching on the concept of justice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all you who believe be persistently standing for justice continuously standing for justice Time and time, standing for justice. Witnesses in justice. And do not let a hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is nearer to taqwa, to piety, to righteousness. And fear Allah, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted with what you do. So the concept of justice, of course, is touched on earlier in the Quran as well. In the previous surah, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares a similar verse in which we are commanded to be just, to stand for justice, even if it's against our own selves, even if it's against um, our parents or those who are close to us from our relatives, etc. And here we learn two important principles. Number one is that in Surah An-Nisa, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be just, even if it's against our own selves or our parents or those who are close to us, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that don't let your biases, don't let your biases towards somebody prevent you from being just. I.e. don't be unjust when it comes to those who are close to you. How are you unjust to those who are close to you? You might allow your love for somebody to um, push you in a way which, or to act in a way which is unjust. So for example, when it comes to inheritance, you have a child that you love and that love for that child, you're saying that this child will get more than the other child. This is unjust. This is your love for that one person and allowing you to act unjustly towards the others. And then in this verse, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what? Do not let the hatred of somebody or a people allow you to act unjustly. So in either state that you're in, in each case Allah is saying, don't let your love or your hatred for someone allow you to be unjust. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uses a word, He says, Qawwameen. Qawwameen, and you feed taqrar in Arabic, it's consistently or constantly or time and time or over and over again you stand for justice so standing for justice is part and parcel of who we are as believers it's part and parcel of who you and I are as those who claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but why do we stand for justice you will find that today there are people who maybe not Muslim but they stand for just causes it's a human instinct there's sometimes that we want to stand against oppression and stand for justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us you stand for justice, why? Lillah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why you and I stand for justice. We don't stand for justice so people will say, look at this person, he's standing up for the oppressed. You don't stand for justice so it enhances your reputation. You don't stand for justice because that's the thing to do today. No, you stand for justice because you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, prior to revelation, you have to understand that these ayat are being revealed at a time um, which, in which, of course, Islam is being established and concepts and foundational principles are being established. But prior to this, prior to revelation, we know that Makkah was an unjust society. The weak 
were oppressed, the weak weren't given their rights, and those who were wealthy and noble and came from big tribes and uh, noble tribes would, um, would be let off if they did something unjust. So it's a very unjust society, and there are many incidents from the seerah that prove this. One I'll share with you very briefly is Hilf al Fudun. What is Hilf al Fudun? So there was a man from the Zubayd tribe, which was a Yemeni tribe, and it was a low class tribe. He was in Mecca just before the Hajj season, and he entered into a transaction with one of the chiefs of Quraysh, whose name was Al As ibn Wa'il. And Al As ibn Wa'il, he said, I will pay you after Hajj. So the time came for payment after Hajj. Yes, the man he goes and he wants his payment. What happens? As he's asking for his payment, Al As ibn Wa'il just keeps pushing him off. Yeah, come back tomorrow, we'll sort it out, we'll sort it out. And he's just pushing him off. And he wasn't giving him his right. So the man then went to the different tribes, the Banu Hashim, the Banu Abdul Mataf, and he's asking for his right. And they, what are they going to do? They, they basically say that, look, there's not much we can do. Again, they push him off. This is one of the chiefs of Quraysh. What are we supposed to say to him? So then the man, he goes to the Kaaba. And when he's at the Kaaba, he starts to recite poetry. Poetry which talk about the injustice that was committed against him, how his rights not being fulfilled, etc. And he's publicly announcing this. Now that was the day you would get your, that was the way you would get your message out. In the olden days, there was no, you know, TikTok and uh, Instagram and, you know, you put a message out there and it goes all around the world. No. The way you'd get your message out is you go to the Kaaba and you'd recite some poetry. Subhanallah. So one of the, the leaders of Quraysh, Zubair ibn Abdul Muttalib, he then gathered the other leaders and they met in the house of Abdullah ibn Jad'al and they entered into a treaty and they said that we are going to support the oppressed over the oppressor no matter who the oppressor is. Even if the oppressor is one of the leaders, one of the chiefs, we're going to support the oppressed. This was a pact that was made prior to revelation. The Prophet ﷺ, he said hadith in Bukhari, he said, I witnessed in the house of Abdullah ibn Jad'an a treaty that if I was asked to uphold it in Islam, I would uphold it. What was that treaty? This treaty of Hilf al-Fadul. Why? Because that was a treaty which sought to abolish injustice. So the Prophet ﷺ was always there um, to promote justice and to stand against injustice. And the Prophet ﷺ himself, he embodied it. Now today, it's very easy for us to talk about justice and say we need to be just, etc. But let me put this to you. If somebody committed a theft against your neighbor, you would want justice to be applied. If I ask yourself and myself the question, if that was my son or your son that committed that theft, would we still want the, per the, the punishment to be applied? That's a question for us to reflect on. That shows if we truly stand for justice. And this happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It didn't happen in that sense, but the Prophet ﷺ was one day approached. So there was a, a lady from the Banu Makhzum tribe who committed a theft. So the leaders of Quraysh or the people of Quraysh said, who's going to intercede? Yes for her with the Prophet ﷺ. And they said, nobody can do that except for Usama ibn Zayd, the one who's beloved to the Rasul. So Usama ibn Zayd went to the Prophet ﷺ. And he's trying to intercede for this woman from Banu Makhzum. And the Prophet ﷺ, he got angry. He said, do you try to intercede for somebody in a case connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishments? And then he went on and delivered a short sermon and he said, what destroyed the nations of the people of the past was that if a noble amongst them stole, they would forgive him. Yes, if a poor person amongst them stole, they would inflict Allah's punishment upon them. And then he said the famous statement. He said, Lo anna Fatima tabna ta Muhammadin laqatatu yadaha. He said, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, his own daughter, was to steal, I would apply the punishment to her. The punishment would be applied to her. This is the principle of justice that the Prophet ﷺ was embodying, my dear brothers and sisters, within the companions and within the Muslims. And sometimes when we think of justice, we think it only applies to the rulers and the leaders. The truth is it applies to you and I, in our own lives. Are we just when it comes to our children, when it comes to those who we have responsibility over? Yes, when it comes to, you might be an employer, are you just with your employees? Are you just with your colleagues? Justice applies to each and every one of us, my dear brothers and sisters. And when we don't stand for justice, then corruption will spread on earth. Destruction will spread on earth. And this is what we see today, and I'll end on this. There's a parable that's given, um, a famous parable of the, 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 the three bulls and the lion. Uh, you're thinking, when you started off on justice and Quran, ayat, and you're ending up on bulls and a lion. 
but bear with me inshallah. So this is parable that's given that there were three bulls and a lion and this lion wanted to kill the bulls, he wanted to eat the bulls. But he realizes that I can't just go to the three bulls, they'll overpower me. So what does he do? He decides to befriend the bulls. He becomes friends with them. And one day he approaches, so the three bulls are the brown, the black and the white. One day he approaches the brown bull and the black bull. And he says to them that look, you know this white bull, this white bull stands out. This white bull is going to cause you guys problems. Why don't you let me take care of the white bull for you? Yeah, so the black bull and the black, uh, brown bull, they think, you know, it makes sense. And he's going to cause us problems, stands out, etc. So they say, okay. So the lion goes, attacks the white bull, kills the white bull. Then a short time later, comes back and he approaches the brown bull. Says to the brown bull, you know you, you're the, you know, you're the real bull. You're the, you're the bull who should have all of this. You're the strong bull. He says, you know the black bull, the black bull might try something in the future. Why don't you let me take care of the black bull for you and then everything you see is all yours. So what do you think the brown bull says? The brown bull says, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, true, the black bull might do something in the future and if he takes care of him, I have all of this. So he says, okay. So the lion goes and kills the black bull. And then a short time later, he comes back to the brown bull. And this time he's not nice and coming back in the same manner. The brown bull realizes what's happened. He's coming now for the brown bull. And before the brown bull is killed, he makes a statement. He says, He said, I was killed the day the white bull was killed. I, sound, I signed my own death warrant the day the white bull was killed. What does that teach us? That you know when you allow injustice to spread, when you allow oppression to spread, then it destroys everybody. What led to their demise is that they allowed that initial decision to allow injustice to spread. And for us, my dear brothers and sisters, what does it mean? When we allow injustice and oppression to spread in our families, Yes, in our communities, in our societies, it will destroy the society. So we should be people who stand up for justice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us from those who stand for justice.